emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, welcome to part seven. Yeah, seven of our build of the MPC 22 inch 148 scale Eagle Transporter from Space 1999 for emodels.co.uk. Hello, welcome. Right now, if you remember in the last episode, we got this done. We built the engine gefarten ballen und tanken mit the flame and unser propulsing yeah we, we did the engine bits that go on the butt end of the ship we didn't do the thruster bells they'll be done at the very end but we did all the fuel tanks propellant tanks and the balls uh, and all the framework that that goes on so that was super super fiddly if you remember it was just a living hell to film things i do for you folks i don't know today we're going to do something i'm going to say this now and it's going to make it turn out to be the worst thing ever but we're going to do something a lot easier so i've said it now it's going to be a nightmare we're going to be doing the passenger module or the science module or the cargo module depending on the mission at hand but in this case it's going to be either the rescue or the science module it's the bit in the middle uh, and it's going to do steps 27 28 29 hang on hang on there we go 30 and 31 and if we get time because this might not take too long. We'll see if we can do step 32 as well. Do you know, this? Uh, there's one thing that does my head in on the model, and I've said it before. It's, it's these fold-out single sheet instructions. Oh, I can't be doing with it. It's, uh, where's the one I want now? Oh, do you know? Oh, I tell you, there's nothing worse. Right, model manufacturers, stop, stop. Please stop doing this single sheet instructions. It's a pain in the bum. I mean, give Ravel credit, they actually at least do booklets. They don't put staples in them. So Ravel, sort that out. Put staples in your instruction booklets. That's really annoying. But just, oh, I know it's only like, you know, 20 odd steps, but still, if somebody goes to all the trouble of drawing all this, I don't want to have to be unfolding a roadmap every five minutes. It's a right pain in the bum, especially when you're trying to film it. Anyway, right, so we're going to build the module in the middle. Before we go ahead and start the buildy buildy, uh, I want to show you a couple of quick techniques. When you start taking this off the sprues, for some reason, on these particular parts, the, the, the bits where the sprue joins the part, the sort of the nub, the tree, whatever you want to call it, they are massive. These big, massive wedges of plastic. <sighs> They're a right pain. So uh, when you're cutting them off the sprue, and you probably this is probably teaching you to suck eggs, but just in case, unlike the other parts where you're just clipping them off, uh, even more so here, when you're clipping these off, there's some sort of nice crisp edges you want to keep, and this is a soft curvy edge. So don't just go in and it, snap them straight off the sprue against the piece, because what you'll do is you'll risk gouging this plastic, and then you'll lose that nice, in this case, a nice curvy edge. When you get them on the sprue, and I should have done this before I cut them off, cut them off with about, you know, about, I don't know, that far away from the piece. So you get a good chunk of sprue left. Cut them off the sprue put them to one side. Then you can go with the nippers very carefully and trim that part away, but leave a tiny bit left. Don't go right up to the plastic because you don't want to damage the plastic. Uh, when you've done that, get yourself your modeling knife and very gently just scrape away any little nubs. Now you see there, there's a little nub, that's what's been left on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm very carefully gonna scrape that away with the knife. I'm gonna try and keep the knife, well, let's not do it on that bit, let's do it on this bit. There you go. 
there's one I've done. I've cut it away from the sprue. I've left a little bit sticking on there. Now, because this is a nice straight and fat edge, what we can do is we can get the nippers, get the flat edge of your nippers, line them up on the edge as best you can, and just very gently nip. Now, you're not going to get it all off, but because it's a nice, thick, flat edge, you can rest it on there and you can nip away at that bit. So there's a little bit left. Then you need to go in with your sharp knife. Uh, and don't do like me and stab yourself. Uh, anchor the piece in your hand and anchor the blade in your hand some way. Some people like to do it away from themselves. I can't do that. But I like to rest my thumb on my other thumb so I can't suddenly jab and stab myself. Get the blade flat to the surface and just shave. Don't dig, don't gouge. Just shave that little nub away. Shave, 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 shaving, shaving all the nubs away. Okay, so you've got most of it. You can still feel it and see it. Get the blade, blade edge on. Go back over it. Again, keep it flat to the surface. That should get rid of most of it. And if you feel it, you'll still have a little tiny nub. So what you want to do then, this is the advantage of the big flat bits. Get yourself your sanding stick. Now I've got a couple. I've got a couple of UMP ones. I've got the rough white one and I've got the squishy gray one. That's coarse and medium. I think that's medium or coarse and that's sort of fine. It's not quite bullet polishing and buffing, but it's almost there. Uh, I don't know what grit they are. I can't remember, but these are the UMP sticks. Uh, now all you need to do to get the, you want to keep this edge nice and flat because you're going to make a box. So get your stick and hold it flat like that. Because these are, these are not flexible. This one is spongy flexible. This one is reasonably rigid. So get it flat against the surface and just drag it back and forth. Don't do this. Don't do that. Get it flat and just drag it back and forth along the edge. And this way you should have a better chance of keeping that nice straight edge. And if I feel it now, I can feel a little bit of a lump there. So I've got more work to do there. A little bit more. And there we are, good. So that's got rid of me bits. Now what you will find is sometimes doing that puts a little bit of a raspy edge on this. So just go over this edge quickly, just gently. You don't have to do hard on this one, just to get rid of any roughness. Then I can go back in with my spongy one. I'm not pressing at all on this really. I'm not doing any pressure. This is just to smooth it off a little bit. A bit on there. There we go. And that gets rid of my big nubs. Now, on this bit, you've got your curve here. And there's a couple of things I want to show you here. You've got a big nub there. You've also got a seam line going down the middle. And you've got two little sort of recessed panel lines in which that seam line goes straight in. So what you need to do, same again. First of all, get my knife. I'll just get my visor on so I can see what I'm doing. Get my knife and just very gently shave away most of that little nub. Okay, now this is a curved surface, so you may have to angle the blade a few times just to get most of it. But again, you're not putting much pressure on, you're being very light. So most of that. Now again, because this is curved, you can't do this. What you're going to do here is follow the shape like this. And we're going to go one direction because we want to get rid of that nub. So we're just going to go zoop. We're going to follow the curve of it, put a bit more pressure on them before, and we're just going to work that away. And hopefully we'll be able to maintain the curve. With the spongy one, I can just go like this. You can see me doing that. Just to keep the curve, you don't want to flatten it out. And I know this is like teaching you to suck. I know you know how to sand, but some of you may be new to this. And, you know, other parts, you just quickly sand them and get them off the sprue. These ones you've got to be a bit more careful. Now you've still got the seam line to deal with, and that's super easy. Uh, you can either take your blade and do it edge on and scrape the seam away, or I use a I use a, a, a seam remover tool. You can do that as well, and that's just a case of scraping it away very gently to get rid of that seam line. This is the same stuff you had to do on all the tubes and pipes. And again, I'm angling the blade every now and then just to maintain the curve. Now, as I say, you can use your model blade for this. I'm using this seam removal tool just because it's stiff, thick metal, so it makes it easier. It's actually faster than a blade, but you can use your knife blade. Just be aware that with a knife blade, you might be more likely to gouge the plastic as the blade skitters. So I'll give that a sand with this squishy soft one, just to smooth off any little gouges. Do, 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 do. Just thought I'd show you this, because they are really, really big nubs on these parts. So that's got rid of most of it. There's still some there, so I'll need to do some more work on that, but that's fine. 
one last thing you'll need to do when you've got rid of the seam line you will see you might not see on camera but the seam line continues in that little recess in that little panel line there there's two panel lines to get rid of that you need a, 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 a scribing tool i've got a tamiya scribing tool here uh, i've quite like this one it's got a retractable blade and all you need to do with your scribing tool you can use your knife blade but it might gouge and make a horrible mess a scribing tool is designed not to really make rough gouges it's more for making your panel lines all i need to do very gently is get the scribing tool in the little trough in the little panel line and just with no pressure just start scribing that i'm not pushing down i'm very slowly digging into the plastic that's in there that makes the little seam and very slowly it will start to carve that away That. So I'll go ahead and finish that seam line across here because it needs a bit more tidy up. Clean out the one there. Uh, and then we'll start with the assembly. Now we're going to have to think about the clear windows as well. So um, depending on how the assembly goes will determine how I do the windows because they're supposed to be black. So yeah, but let me clear away all this shaving mess and get this finished and we'll crack on. Okay, so let's get to the building. Now what we're going to do, like we did in the last episode, is kind of not use the order of things in the book. Uh, the way it basically works is you have your floor panel here. Uh, you have these pieces that go on the side and they just have uh, a lip in the plastic here. And all it does is it just sits on there. It doesn't glue, it doesn't, there's no pegs and holes, it just sits like that. Uh, and then you put the walls into here, but you're going to be pushing them around. So I don't want to have to glue this on and leave it for hours and then put the walls on. I need to get this done. So I'm not going to glue these on first. I'm going to put the walls in first. Now it is a very tight fit. So you take your wall piece and you take this bottom bit. Now, one thing I've noticed is uh, the instructions aren't very clear, but you see here, there's like a little groove here. The wall needs to go inside that groove, this tab here. Uh, but what I noticed was when you try and do it, you'll notice it's a very tight fit anyway, which is good, but there's a little bit of bleb at the end, at both ends. And that's caused by these little ejector pin marks. So before you go ahead and put everything in together finally, just scrape these off. Just scrape them down flat. Just get it off. Let's get it off. And I didn't I didn't notice these being a problem until I actually put the walls in. So we're just going to scrape that flat. And then once that goes together, once that's gone, you should find then that it fits like a glove much better so there you go so that's the side wall with the bottom lip there you go now all you need to do is then basically glue that onto the floor like that so we'll do the other one where's the other one gone there's the other one i'll get the other one done now very quickly so make sure the notch is here goes into the little groove Make sure I've scraped all the little tabs off. Yes, I did it before. So it all fits nicely. So that's both walls done. We will glue these, but just not right at this moment. So now we have the two side walls, which will go on like this. Now, there's an interesting thing to note about the floor. Uh, on this side, you might see we have lots of ejector pin marks and it's flat. On this side, it's all very flat, but there's two little nobbles here. This is the outside because there's two little greebles that go on these. So make sure when you're gluing this, you're doing it without the nobbles here. These need to be, the walls need to go on there. Now this is where it hopefully goes very simply. All we need to do is get these two side walls and these two end walls and glue it all together. So what I will do is I should get my Tamiya Extra Thins I shall run it along, make sure that's the right lip. Run it along the inside of the lip here, just very quickly. Just to get some glue on there. Get it down. And again, there are no locating pins at all for this whatsoever. Uh, you basically have to line up the edge with the end of the floor panel and not have it overhanging. It's just the right length. So that's that. You've got to hope it stays on while I do the other one. You kind of, it's weird they don't have any little tabs or holes, but hey, 
doesn't really matter. Now somehow pick this one up and get this one on there. I can feel the first one moving. Get that lined up. So I'm just going to hold them very briefly, just to, for a few seconds. And as before, with all the other stuff we've done, because I'm using the Tamir Extra Thin, it means I've got time to play. I've got time to move things around if I need to, or pull them all apart again. So I'm just going to hold that there. Now what I will do is I'll get some glue on the inside. And because this is the Extra Thin, I can just touch it to it and it will suck underneath and feed in. Okay, so there we have it. Now it's very easy to put the walls in. The end walls just go on the end like that. And they should just slot in, but they will allow you as well to get things flush. So you can see there it fits in quite nicely. So what I'll do, there's a few little bits here where it glues in. So I'm gonna put some glue in there first, just to start things off. Oops, then I'll drop it. There we go. But this is why I love this extra thin because I need to be able to adjust as I go. I know these walls won't be flush straight. So having all this movable means I can have time to adjustificate as I go. So that goes there. We'll get some glue on the inside. You can see here it's got another little lip at the bottom. Have I got it in shot? Yes, there we go. Got another little lip on the bottom. I can put more glue on the inside just to get everything in place initially. Push things together. Okay, so that's in there. I'll get some glue down the corner. See, I, I like kits when they're at th this stage when it's just slap things together. No thinking required. Okay, and for this one, exactly the same. So we'll get the glues. I'll put it on this bit instead this time. Do -do -do. Be quite generous with it. Again, this is just to give some tack when I put these things together. That should go together quite nicely. Oops. There we go. So what I need to do now is go in here and get the glue in here. You see? Juicy. And be really generous because you want it to go in all the little nooks and crannies and work its way in and really get everything stuck together. There we go. So now what I can do is give all of it a little push and squish. Get some glue down the corners. There we go. There we go, that's going in. Make sure that's nice and straight. Get some glue going down in there, shall we? There we go. Now what I want to do here is get some glue in these corners here because the bottom bits you might be able to see are kind of, if I do it on camera, kind of coming apart a little bit. So I'm just going to push that together. Same on this side. Okay, and you can see like when we did the other parts, it just fits together beautifully. Absolutely gorgeously. More or less. More or less. I'll get some glue down here. Got a little bit of a gap here going on. What's happening there? There we go, it just needs to be pushed in. And then what I'll do is once I've got this loaded up with glue, I'm doing it all off camera, I do apologize. Once I've got this all wonderfully loaded up with glue, I will wrap round it with some masking tape and just leave it for half an hour just for everything to get really bedded in. Because it does require some squishy squishy at the ends just to get the ends to stick together. And if when you're doing this you get some gluey fingerprints, don't panic. You can just sand them back a little bit. We got that on there. Cool, so I'll do the other end and we'll get some tape on there and let that dry for a little bit. See how it's come apart a bit? It just needs some tape to get it all stuck together. So I shall go and do that now. Okay, so that's done. It's had time to dry. Uh, nice and straight. I will say though, it does have a slight wobble when you put it on a flat surface at the bottom. 
I think these parts are ever so slightly perhaps warped, which is not a major problem. It's only a very slight wobble, and you're not going to see it when it's in situ. Um, so there's a few things we need to do to this now. This is all glued in. You can see there's some there's a seam line here, and you get seam lines down the edge here. Those are fine. We'll fill those in with sprue goo and get them all hidden away and sanded back. Now the next step would be to put on the roof. However, we're not going to do that. I did a quick test fit uh, and I was surprised. I thought the center part would go in this little channel here, but it doesn't. It's not wide enough. It actually just sits between the two corner part, the two edge parts, like that. Now you're going to have to sort of glue this like that because you're going to have a gap here because it bends. But this will be glued at these points here and it will be screwed in because the spine screws through the top. So this isn't going to come off. You will have a potentially have a step or a gap here, but when you put the spine on, you're not going to see that. It disappears completely. So when you do do this yourself, don't worry if this isn't glued in or doesn't show it. It's fine. Now, the reason we're not going to do this is because I've got the windows to do. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some research, but I think the windows on the filming model are just sort of a satiny black colour. They're not shiny plastic like glass. So I'm not going to try and reproduce that. I'm going to just paint the windows in probably just a black primer because that has a slight sheen to it. But I'm not going to install them until this part has been fully painted and weathered and everything else. Uh, and had all the stuff done to it and had a matte varnish on. Because what I want to try and get is the, this, for the whole passenger module and the rest of the ship to have a matte finish. But for the windows to have ever so slightly a sheen. So they'll be unvarnished and unprotected. They'll just be black primer with a slight sheen to it. So we're going to leave these off. We'll finish building the rest of this module, get everything painted up. When it's all painted up and done, we'll glue these on, fully painted and weathered. We'll just glue them in, get the roof on, but we'll put the glass windows in before we attach these to the pod. So that way, once these go on and the windows are in, there's no more matte varnishing to go over the top because that's already been done. So it's gonna be sort of half constructed. Now it does mean you'll get like a little seam there. I can live with that, it's not the end of the world. So there's a few things left to do with this. Uh, we need to get all the greebles on the bottom and we'll do that very quickly um, let's have a look so this is the main bar section that just sits on top like that you see nice and simple so what we'll do is we'll get all these little bits on first before we sort the seam lines out so we're just going to go in very quickly it's not particularly hard i might speed this up a little bit I'm going to put some glue on the nubs just to start it going. Get this on, turn it over, get some glue in there. So I probably won't show all of this because it's just gluing these bits on the bottom. And what I will do is also run it along here just to get the glue working its way underneath like I've said before you can afford to be generous with this glue it evaporates rather than stays as pools so if you do get any blobs of glue and no, I'm not the camera if you do get any blobs of glue don't worry the majority of them will evaporate away Now we need to do the greebles. So we have, we'll put these in place first. So we have this one here, uh, like a little trumpet. Ba -da. We have, uh, what have we got? We've got this one that goes here. Oops. It does go here, there we go. Uh, we have this little thing here which needs to go like, it's like a little fire extinguisher or something. I can't actually, let me get my tweezers. I can't actually see what I'm doing. Get in there. There you go. That is in. Now we have one of these, which goes 
here. Now, the reason, remember I said way at the start that you have to make sure the little nubs are on the outside. That's how you know which is the outside. It's because these little round pieces require those nubs to glue onto. And that needs to go the other way around. There. Get into place. Does go that way. This piece on here. Like that, you see. And last of all, we have what looks like a fuel tank off a small tank kit. Remember, these are all like, you know, greebles they took from model kits and things. So, knowing Jerry Anderson, they're probably all from Airfix kits. So, they're in. Just going to touch around them with some glue to get them in place and locked. What's left? Okay, so now here's something. Here's something. This part, I'll just adjust the focus for you so you can see. I'll move in a bit closer so you can see it. This part here, you see, uh, it has two parts that go here and here, these little flat things. And they're supposed to sit here and here. And here, you can see they have half circle holes. However, on the actual piece itself, that's a full circle. That's not going to go in that hole ever. It just doesn't go. So what you'll need to do is get your knife and widen these holes. Now, I did debate whether to leave these parts off and paint them separately. So I'm just going to get the knife in there and widen it. Because they are a slightly different colour, especially like a, a darker colour. But it doesn't matter. You can just... I'll be able to brush paint them, no problem. So now, that fits on perfectly. See, no problem. So we'll get those two on there. Hopefully I've got that hole wide enough. Get those two bits on there. Make sure they're straight. Maybe get straight, get straight. Almost. Or almost. Not quite get that one straight, come on. Quite a tight fit. Use those again. Right, why aren't you moving? There we go. There we go. What we'll do is get some glue on the back of those. Gluing, gluing, gluing. Do a little bit around the edge. There we go. Let's get that in place. So yes, it's a strange little thing. They've given you the little half moon holes, but they give you full pegs. I don't quite know why they've done that. So that's them on. There's two others to do on the other side. Apologies, it's all off to the side. There's two to do on the other side as well. Uh, they, are, they are a slightly different colour, but when it comes to painting, they'll be very easily brush painted. I don't need to mask those off. They're only small, so brush painting those will be fine to get the different colour. So I'll just make sure there's some more glue on there. So that's that. Yeah. So I'll do the other side as well. Now all that remains are two things. First and foremost, uh, I need to sign this as best I can. I don't always show it on camera, but I always try and sign my models. Pull the camera back out again. You don't need to zoom in on this one. I always try to sign my models somewhere. So we'll sign it. A little silly drawing. It's not a very good drawing, but hey, I'm doing it quickly. There you go, done. That's now signed. It's not brilliant, but it's just, I like putting it in there. It's just a little bit of personalization that no one will ever, ever see. Uh, if you, if you, if you, if you've actually ever bought one of my models, if you've bought one of my builds, and you happen to one day unfortunately drop it and be absolutely gutted, you might find inside there's a signature somewhere. Don't do that. It's not worth it. Uh, what's left on this now is just to sort out these seams. Now you've got the seam here. I'm not worried about the seam along here because as you can see it's mostly covered up by this and you're not going to see it anyway. But let's do it properly. So the seam along here I can leave, that's fine. There's a seam here. And you've also got this little seam line here down the side. Now it's not 
massive. It's not the worst thing. Let me change the white balance and colour again for you. There we go. Um, but it'd be nice to tidy it up. So all we're going to do is use our good old friend some sprue goo. Sprue goo. Uh, and if you haven't watched the previous episodes in this playlist, I do recommend uh, you go to the rest of the playlist because they are in a playlist and you can watch all the episodes. Uh, sprue goo is just a jar of Tamiya Thin with a whole mess of tiny pieces of plastic card dropped into it and melted in. Uh, sprue goo is just a brilliant filler because effectively you're filling the model with plastic which makes it brilliant to sand. You can use like fillers or you can use sometimes just the glue on its own to bubble the plastic out but this is just a bit quicker. Uh, and all we're doing is the glue goes on with the polystyrene dissolved into it, the glue evaporates away, the polystyrene is left behind to fill the gap, and the nature of the glue means that the plastic welds together a bit more anyway. So if you're looking at a quick and speedy way to do filling, sprue goo is a really easy way. And all you do is quite simply get your sprue goo and touch it over the gap you want to fill. There we go. Um, the, and sprue goo is done when you mix it yourself you want it to be thick like tipex so nice and thick but thick enough not to just drip off the end of the brush you want it to be thick enough that it can hold its shape a little bit and fill the gap now this will sink it will drop down um, and when it comes to sanding it it may have sunk into the gap so what you need to do is get your sprue goo on there Give it 24 hours to fully cure and dry. And then go back in. If you need more, go back in with more over the top. Because what you want to do is you've got a gap here. Let's say let's say this is, let's say you've got a piece of, I haven't got a piece of plastic, but let's say you've got a piece of plastic here and there's another one here and this is your gap. Uh, let's see if we can find a flat piece. Let's just pretend that's two pieces of plastic. You're trying to make a bubble of sprue goo that goes over this gap here. Now when you've glued these together, the glue will have melted the plastic and filled it a little bit anyway. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. But what you're making is a bubble over the plastic. Now some of it will sink in and this bead of bubble of glue will be there. You want that to be there so that when it's dry you can sand it back and you have a perfectly flat surface. It may be a different colour until you paint over it but it would be a perfectly flat surface. So let it dry for 24 hours check it against the light to see if it's sunk in because it will sink in a little bit if it has go over it again with some more let that drive 24 hours and then you're ready to sand it now i haven't done that side bit there uh, because there's no way i could sand that effectively without making it look like ass so i'm quite happy you're not going to see that anyway so i need to do the same on here and down these side parts get the rest of these little greeble pieces here um, and then there's just one more step before we can call this episode quits and start things like painting. There are a few other bits after painting starts to glue together, but that's later on, little bits and bobs. So, I'll go off and finish the rest of this. And when we come back, we'll do, when we come back in the next bit, we'll do the bit with the spine. Back in a moment. Okay, now it's time to sort out the last real bit of buildy buildy before we start the painting process. And what we're going to be doing is gluing the fore and aft modules to the spine. These aren't glued yet. Um, I did, I was originally going to keep these separate for painting, but I realised I'm probably not going to have too many problems getting paint with the airbrush into these top parts where the spine is. It's probably going to be fine. So what we'll do, we'll get these glued on. So what we have is this is the front and this is the back. And it's important to keep a track of what's where. Uh, both of these modules have the corridor door hatch they need to be on the inside uh, on the front you have the bit where the command module goes in and on the back you have this bit at the back where the thrusters and engines will be uh, and it's quite simple you've just got four pegs one two three four and one two three four and on the top of each one you've got four little holes now i've taken the side pieces off i'm not gluing these on uh, at all until after painting because I want to be able to make sure I can get in there with either just you know the airbrush or even when I'm doing weathering I need to be able to get in there with the brush so it's going to be easier to have that off so make sure these are our door door and this is quite simple now what I'm going to do I'm going to use a bit of to me a normal cement for this to start with uh, because I don't want it to evaporate straight away and there's a bit of fiddling to do so what we're going to do first 
is get some just regular Tamir cement and get this on these little blobs where everything attaches just to start the process so we'll get that on there we'll line it up a little bit make sure it's in so that is in uh, and then what I'll do give that a squish now what I will do is go in with the extra thin oh, I'll do it on camera there and start running that between everything just to make sure it goes in to all the little joints now you have got these little little tabs here off camera there these little latches or clamps they now touch the tubes on the spine so I can put some glue behind those I'm going to run it along here make sure it's in there get it down here and I'm going to be as, as always I'm going to be quite generous because I really want this to be a good grip and I'm going to squash that down get some in here get some in there Apologies if this is going off camera. Get some around the back. And now, it won't be 100% locked in place because it's still, obviously there's glue in there that needs to dry. So that's that one in. We'll do this one. Same again, go in with the thick glue first. And this is just to be a, an anchor. Get this on. Where the hole is, where's the hole? There's the hole. Get that on, turn this over. So now I've got this in place. Remember, I'm using my glass tray because I need a nice flat surface. Get some glue in here. Do -do. Run it in the middle between everything. See if I can turn this without everything else falling apart get the glue in there nice and generous you really start to get a feel for the size of this thing now oops my glue was escaping off the table and again for this kind of thing where it's a structural bond this is again where the Tamir extra thin comes in perfect because it's a welding cement, it welds the plastic together, which gives you a stronger grip than normal CA glue or normal polystyrene cement, which is a chemical bond. This literally melts and welds the plastic together. Go upside down just to get some more in there. Right on the front. Apologies, this is slightly off camera. I'm a little limited on space here. Uh, and that is now done. So I'm going to leave that for a second. Now when I built the spine, I did make the top part of the spine a little bit skew whiff. It's not 100% vertical and horizontal. So I'm going to let it cure this way up. Uh, no, actually. Yeah, we'll do it this way up. First of all, put some pressure on. Don't worry about the spine, that's a very rigid structure. It's quite firm. So we'll get those flat for a moment, get some pressure on it. Okay, and now like I said, because the spine itself wasn't 100% straight at the top, the bottom's obviously horizontal, but this one is a little bit skew if Not so much you'd notice. So what I need to do now is get some weight on this. And with that taken care of, this episode is done. Don't panic. I've not gone ahead and built a load of stuff you didn't see me do. I've just loosely put everything together to start getting a feel for how it's all, you know, becoming one. Um, after I'd finished filming that last bit, gluing the, the modules on, I took a couple of heavy books and just put them one over each module. I didn't put them over the middle bit because there was nothing underneath to support it. I put a book over that and a book over that just to push it down onto the glass cutting mat and that made everything nice and straight and flat and I left that for a few hours to do its thing glue. Uh, one thing I do want to show you, and I just snapped it all together then, like I say, just to get a feel for it. Now one thing I do want to show you, and this is cool for two reasons, is this. Look, if I can get that off. Look, the nose cone, the command module, and the engines, 
they're not glued on they're just pushed into place that's brilliant that makes my life so much easier for two reasons one when i take this back to e-models when i finished it and i take it back to go in their display cases i can just pop these off and it makes transporting this whole thing a lot easier i'll build it in such a way that these come off as well when it's all assembled so i can pop the feet off pop the engines off pop the command module off done it also makes it easier when you want to get in and turn the lights on or change the battery you can just pop the whole thing off open it up and do all the changes uh, it's just a nice tight fit these are really tight fit and i had to push it a bit to get it in so that kind of works for me um the nose the command module is not as tight a fit but the two big flat pins that go into the back of the command module they're nice and tight so once that's had more paint on it they'll get even tighter so brilliant the other thing that makes it cool is that I was planning to have to, once these are all painted, the two sort of uh, frame parts that go in at each end, the hexagonal shaped ones, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, octagonal, <laughs> maths, I'm allergic to maths. The octagonal shaped pieces here that push in, I was gonna have to like scrape paint off them to glue them in and then repaint them after I'd painted everything else. It was gonna be a pain in the bum. I don't have to do that now. I can just get everything painted, pop it all together, and it's fine it'll sit on the shelf no problem these can come off those can come off so yes i'm really pleased about that <sighs> so but that's all the building done now there's no more building to do until the paint job is finished and even then all that's left is to do things like uh, glue the rcs thrusters assemble those and put them on here but we need to do those once everything's been painted uh, stick the thruster bells on the back and underneath and the sort of static feet as well and that's about it and then just put it all together then it's decal time so i'm going to do it for this episode when we come back in the next episode we'll start with the painty painty yes now i was hoping to have done this outside i did get myself a load of rattle cans of uh to me as16 insignia white and some other greys to go over the black primer unfortunately it's now the start of october and it's wet and cold and miserable so i can't do that so it's going to be airbrush job i can't work in my spray booth so what i'll have to do is cover up my workbench and work like that. I don't like doing that because it's not in my spray booth and it's not with my extractor fan, but I'm gonna to have to, because it's too big. So that's gonna be fine. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, it's really appreciated. Uh, and also thank you as always to the guys from eModels for supplying this kit for me to build for them. As you know, they're my sponsors, I always declare that. Do pop along if you get a minute to emodels.co.uk and check them out. Uh, the UK's leading online model retailer. They've got everything you need. Kits, uh, kits, tools, books, materials, paints, glues. You need it, they've got it. We always say if they don't have it, you don't need it. Uh, if you're looking for something very specific, either, and it's not on the website, either, they've got something just as good or better. So have a look around. But if it's not there and you need a specific thing, just drop them a line. It's either going to be just out of stock, so it'll come back in stock fairly soon, or perhaps it's something they don't normally carry, but they can get it for you from one of their distributors. So it's always worth giving them a shout. If you can't find what you want and there's nothing similar or better, give them a shout. They can either get it or it'll be back in stock soon. Uh, but that's going to do us. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Go make something awesome. Take care of yourselves, obviously. Go make something awesome. If you're building this along with me, I hope it's coming along nicely. We're getting there. It's nearly, nearly paint time. This is where the fun starts. But yes, anyway, I'll stop waffling now. Go do something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. Size of it. Huge. Huge.